Tough one. Yeah. Let's see. Looks like Goku is going to be the one bearing the brunt of it, theoretically, in the early game. That is a very difficult matchup for the Aurelia. Uh, even when Aurelia was at kind of her peak power, LeBlanc was still capable of pulling off solo kills in lane against it. So Showmaker will be a very formidable opponent if we don't see a swap in the next four seconds. But we do see a swap. Yeah. And it's going to be top. So it's going to be Nagari having a, a more decent matchup. We'll see how Robo is going to go here. Of course, Robo, no stranger to being put in a hole. But honestly, the rest of Flamengo around him did allow him to get within touching distance of that CS margin. It wasn't like a runaway victory for Damwon. I don't think that early game where the Aatrox in the case of the game before was basically a non-factor was the reason why Flamengo lost. It was late game team fights. It was Damwon letting their solo lanes get out of control like they want to do. So I don't mind that at all because Robo doesn't seem like the player that is going to tilt off the planet and then be useless. Mm -hmm. He's going to find his resources and still be relevant when it comes to the later stages. Yeah, and I do want to talk a little bit about the Pike pick from Flamengo as well, because I really like that right now into the Yumi if he's going to be looking to roam. Um, Yumi is not a very good champion at following roam, specifically no. because it's just so low health and you almost always need to have that ally nearby. So because of how powerful Damwon's solo laners are, uh, if we Pike can roam and get something happen, it's going to be big. It's our third game of the day, Flamengo's debut for today. And of course, this LEC studio is about to explode. Brazilian fans, thank you so much for joining us. Let's see whether we can take down the Titans from Korea. Damwon Gaming already looking so dominant today. It might just be the sixth man that can pull them through. Seemingly the most vocal fan base here in the studio. There's, yeah. been, there's been a contest, really, between Flamengo fans, between Unicorns fans, between Splice fans when they were called out for not being as loud as the Unicorns or the Flamengo fans. I mean, you say it's a competition. I don't think it's been any competition. I think Flamengo fans have been way louder than everyone <laughs> so far in the play-in stage. They're going to have to win here. That's going to really blow the roof off. Oh, boy, would it ever. Oh, yeah. Clinching through to the knockout stage, keeping the chance of a first seed alive, knowing they could beat Damwon, who comes in as a fairly well-hyped Korean team. And probably the favorite at this stage, given how yesterday went uh, for Splice, who were our other 2-0 uh, team after yeah. their first day. Got a bit of a leash here for Shrimp at the beginning. But uh, just to remind you guys, if uh, Flamengo lose here, then they will be uh, tied uh, then they will be going up against Royal Youth, sorry. Yep. And uh, Royal Youth has to win that in order yep. to make a tiebreaker, and then they have to play once again. So in theory, this is still a pretty good time for Flamengo, based on the fact that they were able to take down the Turkish representative. Nagri, this is uh, one of the champions that if you're going to do like a lesson on how to lane beautifully, you'd choose one of his Rise games. Mm. His uh, weaving of abilities and uh, his use of sort of stutter stepping and zoning is uh, pretty impressive, as we can see. Robo, not a lot of options. So even though this is 8 CS to 2, mm -hmm. it is already about eight times better than what happened to Robo last game. That's true. Because last game, Robo was first to the wave to start it pushing. Then he got level 2 ganked by Canyon's Talia, and Nagri froze on him until 40 CS to 2. Yeah. So... That completely took Robo out of the game. In this one, the wave is at least going to crash, and he theoretically should be able to pick that up. And he's Aurelia and still does have the Blade Surge, so he can uh, farm under turret very effectively. Shrimp has actually snuck around Canyon here and has a chance to go for a gank on a Nagri. Robo's a little low and would like to kill these minions, but they're going for it. Yep. Try and stay in range of the minions, Nogari, as he does manage to get the snare, but the flash forward, the knock up, and Nogari's gonna go down for first blood. The Q's gonna register there from Canyon, but doesn't have the gap to close. And Robo Blade surges himself to the safety of the turret. Canyon still aggressively looking here as Showmaker gets the snare in the mid lane, but it's nothing like the kill Flamengo just picked up. Massive first blood, but I don't know if we're completely done yet. Canyon's trying to keep the pressure on, and Robo is at about half health and has no one to come get him. If he can recall, he'll teleport back and be safe, and it'll be a clean first blood for Shrimp. 
Yeah, Nogri, of course, just teleports all the way back in, so it's not as punishing, but Robo did hold on to the flash, and that is very important. Didn't need to expend that in order to pick up the kill. They used shrimps instead, which is very intelligent. Another teleport going to come in. A couple of daggers done now as the fall oh, gets UN is in there. Yeah, a lot of auto attacks down as well. And remember, this is press the attack, so more damage in comparison to what Conqueror would be able to give you as far as sustain. It's here on the bottom side, looking for a bone skewer. Doesn't find it at all, throws it into the wall. Bit of a misclick there, you have to say. It's an unforced error from Lucy. Not expected, had a great couple of games. Yeah, definitely had the chance to maybe force some summoner spells out of that demo on bottom lane, but all told, Robo now wants to try and get back in this lane Problem is, Nokri has just picked up so much CS and the kill ended up going to Shrimp. So, even though Shrimp is probably most comfortable on Rek'Sai, uh, you do want those kills theoretically going over to your Rally. It'll be on Shrimp to really try and hit six first and start to take over this game. He is capable of it. Uh, I saw him do it many times over in the LCS before he went on his international expedition. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, though, if we have a look down to the CS margins, Canyon has uh, certainly been able to spring ahead after the fact yeah. that uh, Shrimp did go down very, very low, gathering that first blood. So good capitalization from the Lee Sin on the other side of the map. As our Nuclear does, of course, have the teleport, pairs it with Beryl's Yumi so that he's able to still have heal and the ignite. Beryl not necessarily requiring... Uh, the flash or anything like that, so he's absolutely able to do this. I do like the Yumi pickup because a lot of the time you see Yumi first picked, right? So it was up to what is our answer to Yumi. If you pick her this late in a draft for Darmon, you don't have the volley bears causing her trouble. You don't have uh, the veins there with the condemn to really ruin her day, or the poppies that can be uh, Shrimp. put around the map. As yet, Shrimp's going to dive in from the back as the you and me is going to be there. Nuclear already has blown the flash, and they just pull him back with the bone skewer. Good night, Nuclear. 2-0 now for Flamengo on the bottom side of the map. Another good gank by Shrimp. Canyon's going to try and do something, but it is just a just one Lee Sin waiting there. Maybe they're hoping that the aggression sticks around with the TP bait. Seems like Canyon's been late to these plays. Yep, wanting to try and shove this lane forward as well. As you can see, Flamengo do have the opportunity to freeze this on Darmwan as well, making it very easy for that return gank possibility from Shrimp. Didn't even need the flash available in order to lock down that bottom lane kill. And uh, Lucy may have missed one of those bone skewers, but landed it when it mattered. Now Canyon towards the mid lane. There's a control ward there, dude. You can see that. He might be a blind monk, but that one, I believe, was in his vision range. Showmaker now with this minion wave wanting to crash it towards Goku as well, but unable to get any of this uh, turret damage just yet. Checking in on the gold. Flamengo are ahead 700. Two kills working out for them. Nogari, 20 CS advantage, but it looks like it doesn't matter too much. So now red buff is going to be secured by Shrimp as yeah. well. Canyon was in position, but unable to punish. First Drake is going to be a cloud, so not really one that either of these teams are going to put too much priority on as we tick closer and closer towards Shelly making her way out onto the rift. Three minutes before she's going to be there. Shrimp playing a very good early game, and this is the type of start that Flamengo wants and needs if they want to have a shocking upset of Damwon. Also realize when you're going through the standings, Damwon's the only undefeated team in plans. Yeah. I think that is just so indicative of the overall strength of these regions becoming closer to parity. Yeah, I feel like it is just a general upgrade of the world of League of Legends, right? Yeah. I feel like the, the playing stage has become more and more competitive, even though there are still now, uh, Hi, Chrome. Yep, they're going to look for the bone skewer. Nogri is going to get pulled back as there's the flawless duet. Knocked yeah. up into the sky. Beautiful chain CC. All too easy. 3-0 and oh now for the Brazilian squad. And Pike is their answer to Yumi. Yumi is not good at matching roams, and Lucy does such a good job. Actually, rushes mobility boots before even tier 2 of his support item, which is an incredibly greedy thing to do. But when you get the kills, it pays off, and they're it's coming in for more. Yeah, back at it again as they're dive bombing around. Canyon gets the flash eventually, but there's the Vanguard's edge, and there's BR 
TTs. First kill of this game. They are absolutely running through Damwon in the early game, Atlas. This is incredible. Yep, really beautiful play here. Four CS is now the lead for Nogari, so that gap is entirely closed. Look at all these plates falling off this turret. Eight and a half minutes in. It's over 2,000 gold, the lead for Flamengo. And they're also already looking like they're initiating this lane swap. So they're going to try and make this game as chaotic as possible and probably keep Nogari down. He's not the kleptomancy Vladimir here that is just that guaranteed unstoppable banker. He has been getting punished in this early game, and that's the spot where I think Flamengo should continue to attack. Yep. The problem that uh, we've seen in the past when it comes to Nogari playing the rise is that he does a bit of tactical inting in the early game. He does like to push way too far. He yeah. does die in these ganks, but as you can see, still farming up just fine. We're going to have a look at how this one went from the perspective of BRTT. Yeah, so BRTT has made the roam up, really just following up with the rest of his team to end up getting this kill. Yeah, good uh, turret to aggro juggling right. as well from the Flamengo squad. But it's not an insurmountable lead just yet. Of course, you can never count out someone they have been behind in gold before in these scenarios. Yeah. Also, also looking at the Aurelia build, full magic resist coming in from Robo. Wits end most likely, which is very good if he can continue to get fights on either LeBlanc or the Rise. It means no one will really be able to match him in the side lanes. Yeah, it's like Lee Sin or Zaya are your options if you want to try and negate the value of the Wits End, and they're not going to do so well. Against the Aurelia, I really like the build choice. Not to mention Merc Treads being necessary if you're playing against the Rise, especially with Nogari's ability to mm -hmm. constantly get snares despite the change to Rise. Jam on, though. Doing their best to get the plates back. Already got three plates down in this bottom side since there were four people from Flamengo sent up, and Robo really all by himself, but... Yeah, I'm Damon perturbed. not looking for a dive. Now that his stun is down, they could go for something, but there's just so many people missing uh, right now since Damwon's vision control is actually much lower than you're used to, and Robo able to soak a good amount of experience uh, safely, so that's good for them. But first heart blood does go over to Damwon. It's going to be answered with Shelly, which could be utilized in the mid lane, which will really be able to accelerate Flamengo's control of Damwon's side of the map, if that's where they're going to go. You can see Shrimp moving on down there. Now just going to look to see whether he can deny anything from the Damwon side. The chicken camp available. Yeah, I think Flamengo should try and break mid as soon as possible because the more yeah. they can accelerate this game and open the map, the more effective the Rek'Sai can be with his gold and also the Pike can be with his roams. Well, as it stands, still Damwon unable to find any kills this game. They have brought it back to within a thousand gold. Nuclear is going to switch sides of the map and team up with Beryl to get this top wave pushed out. Still a few plates that they can gather there and still a few minutes before those plates are going to fall as well. Keeping tabs on that, it is still Darm one that's been able to keep their turrets the most healthy, but Flamengo being able to pick up so many more of these kills. Which one is going to be more important is going to be the question, but I think it's such a beautiful... Oh, okay, we're just going to have a fight yep, first. Nice, let's go. dives in. No snare to happen as there's the root caller, and oh no, Lucy just destroyed the final chapter red to BRTT, who's just running for the hills, and Nogari now has the flash, finds the root prison. Good night, but no, the killer instinct gets him on out. The flash is there as well. Goku's going to die afterwards as the realm walk. Nogari finds the the Q and BRTT falls down. Three kills instantly on the Dom one side, but Shelly is trying to answer bottom lane. Rift Herald is going to help keep the gold close, but this means Damwon is right back in it. Roa completed by Nuguri. 12 minutes into the game, even though he has died multiple times, you just can't stop him from getting to his gold and items. And even though the Rift Herald Chargers is unable to get that second turret, so after all this, we're at a 500 gold difference. Yep, Canyon is here, but doesn't want to go over to try and challenge for this blue buff. I think it's smart. Don't want to dive into two people by yourself, especially not when Shrimp is 2-0 and 2. So let's have a look at how this all happened. It was the stun not working, you and me, and Featherstorm pretty strong. Yeah, gotta say, Nuclear's played a lot better today than he did in their first day of group stage, dodging that initiation by Pike, and then that allows Showmaker to make the roam up. Keep in mind, 
that Flamengo went for this play with two people and a Rift Herald bottom lane. I think they were trying to get one pick and a small fight to actually push Damwon off of the turret. But when you miss that engage, you open yourselves up for the dive, and that's when Flamengo's aggression actually works against them. Things yeah. would have gone much better had they actually not attempted anything in the top lane. Well, sort of misjudging the safety of the outer turret there as well. Of course, uh, Damwon not too worried about it especially with uh, the counter-engage opportunities that they have. I really like that you and me and Featherstorm can be used so that you've got untargetability on your entire bottom lane for a couple of seconds. Be very valuable as Canyon finds the Q onto Goku. He flashes Featherstorms as well. Canyon quite low as Showmaker wants to pick up the turret aggro. Canyon has turret aggro on an inner turret when the outer is still alive, but isn't going to be punished for it at the moment. The punishment looking to happen on the top side with Featherstorm back available again from Nuclear. Flamengo really want to try and make plays happen between Shrimp and Lucy. They're just roaming around together. If they can get kills with this, it's just that gold engine from Pike to everyone available. And it would be a 3v2 dive, but they have to pull it off just right. Yep. Just keep your eye on that cooldown. Oh, four-man dive, oh, maybe. Button. When's Nuclear going to use it? There's the final chapter, multi-rooted. But is Lucy going to be able to survive? The answer is no, but can they get enough of the kills? Ooh. It is two going over to the cat on a book, and a two for two is not what you want if you're Flamengo. And Yumi actually scales really well with gold, which is the frustrating part here for Flamengo. Those items can come in very effectively. It will open up the turret, but that's going to be traded by Damwon, so Every time Flamingo makes a move, Damwon is just pesky. It's so hard to actually get the kills on them. They trade two back, and that means the pressure is elsewhere for Damwon. Yeah, exactly. And also, you've got Nogari pushing on the bottom side of the map. They were able to take the outer turret in the mid lane. It's like when Flamingo make a move, Damwon are defending that move relatively well, but also trying to take everything that they can elsewhere as well. As we're going to have a look at this dive, have a look at the minimap as well, have a glance down, see what's going wrong here. Yep. Pay attention to Pike. Little late uh, on his hook. You'd want to try and force the Xi ult as early as possible because they were taking turret aggro before they even got the ult. If they could have led with the hook before taking turret aggro, there's a high chance that gank would have been more effective. Well, Showmaker not going to find the chains there under Goku, but Goku is being punished here in this lane. Being able to keep up within 20 CS is certainly admirable. You can see Showmaker is hungry for blood. 0-0-1 really hasn't had that much of an impact so far on this game as Showmaker. And uh, after his first game out here today on the Akali, I think we're happy to give him a little bit of a rest. Mm -hmm. He was pretty impressive, but uh, still wanting him to perform up to the standard that um, one need from their solo lanes. This is, a t this is a team that's super binary with how they work, but they do it so well mm -hmm. that it's very difficult to contend with. Exactly. It's like they play through their solo lanes so effectively and both of them are such huge threats that many teams would then think, okay, let's attack nuclear and their weakness. But if you do that, then their solo lanes go crazy. So yeah. I actually like Flamengo's approach a little bit more here where they have directly attacked Nogari for where his weakness is, as you mentioned earlier. So many isolated deaths, even in the LCK. And that gives you a fighting chance against Damwon if you're able to get some kills on nuclear early. Lucy just swimming through the river. Nice blade surge there from Robo to get him back towards his turret. Vanguard's Edge avoided, though. As Nogari comes down, that's a very easy rune prison, and they want more. Lucy has to dive out of the way. And Darwin are now just picking up whatever they want. They've hit their stride. They've hit their items. And now they're going to hit this outer turret and get some more global gold in their back pockets. Wow. Because when we talk about skill shots, uh, it's... Always a combination of the person throwing and the person dodging. But yep. there's been two dodges this game that have seemed just very rare to me. The pike in the bottom lane where his point blank and missed, and we just saw a point blank Aurelia ultimate missed. Yeah. So I believe it's, it was it's missed you and, and dodge. It was you and Mead. Yeah. <laughs> is what I'd call it. Uh, it's both, I think, Flamengo pushing a little bit too hard, but I, I also want to credit Damwon for these really small sidesteps uh, in dodging. Spells like the really alt. Yeah, a bit of finesse coming through here, but it's not not all over yet. Six to six is the kill score. A thousand gold is basically nothing. As we're looking at 17 and a half minutes into this game, Baron going to be rearing, rearing his head relatively soon. Two minutes before he's going to be there, and an uh, sorry, a Trinity Force almost done for Robo. 
The Aurelia in a side lane is what Flamengo want to be playing through, and BRTT is still building towards items. The Rage Blade now done. Nuclear going towards second item Infinity Edge. I always like this if you want to go for two <laughs> item builds, and Nogari already has his. We've already got the Luden's Echo onto Showmaker. As now Canyon dives on forward again and once again is unable to steal away the red. Powling projectile gets himself the 20% slow, but you can feel how much worse that is now. Yeah, definitely not the same as it was. It's like barely even Walk a right slow. Away I'm used it. to seeing Prowling Projectile land and saying, oh, well, he's dead. Yep. Not how that works, just able to do a bit of damage and able to do a bit yeah. more damage than it really should, considering the fact that he's got a lost chapter. Lost chapter and final chapter both being prepared. He's probably the going the Ludens build, which is usually what Yumi can only accomplish uh, when paired up with a Garen or maybe a Mundo. you're going to say solo lane. <laughs> the solo lane, you mean. Yeah. Yes, you need the extra gold from the solo lane as the Yumi. Oh, dear. Yeah. But he's uh, he's getting there. Do you like the Mundo or the Garen? Which is your favorite? I haven't seen enough Mundo yet. Yeah, so, I, I heard someone talking about it, and I was like, theoretically, that sounds awesome. Yeah, so I have this theory. Um, I'm sure you saw the front page Reddit thread about Reckless spamming a bunch of mages and non marks from bot lane. Yep. Um, yes, that's because they're in the same region as G2, and they've proven that to be very successful. But also, I think Fnatic's in the same group as RNG, who traditionally has just dominated Marksman yeah, v Marksman. Yeah, if you could dodge Marksman v Marksman, yeah. that sounds pretty good. If you're so I crazy. feel like that's going to be what Fnatic ends up doing against RNG. And Reckless was the one who was actually playing Mundo in Challenger solo uh -huh. queue with the Yumi. In theory, it should execute similar to the Garen Yumi. Uh, in terms of just like m moving around and helping him. I, I feel like the Garen is actually better uh, because he has a little bit more move, move speed, more execute damage, but I could see the Mundo working if they actually want like multiple options for melee Yumi that they want to have ready. And I think we're seeing a little bit of a sign of what Darmon's composition can do because safeguard and you and me means that you can have two people dive on top of Nogari at a whim. Mm -hmm. Showmaker and Nuclear can stay relatively safe considering their buttons. Shrimp not so much as he flashes away from the chains but gets the ignite to come out there. That was Barrels. And but also we're going to see more stuff like that where Yumi's actually just running around on Showmaker. Okay. Yeah, there's the kick. Lucy able to get out of there but there's another ignite and Showmaker grabs it with that one. Down one pretty easy pick off there onto the pike. Yeah, so that was actually a great example of uh, LeBlanc being an assassin but also a poke mage. Yeah. And when you attach the Yumi to the LeBlanc, that poke just gets boosted, A, from the adaptive stats, but B, because Yumi can also just land a prowling projectile while you jump in. And unless Flamengo is willing to commit teleparts and do all-ins, we're going to see more of that type of stuff, which is just untenable long-term for Flamengo, as Damwon is triple clouded with a poke cop. Yeah, and they uh, also had about a bajillion different maneuverability uh, options. Bajillion being, I think, the mm -hmm. accurate representation mm -hmm. of how many there were. And now with triple cloud drake, they are going to be booking it wherever they want to go. Someone certainly feeling like they're back in control. It was once again shaky in the early stages, but... Uh, it's just, it's so hard, right, to bring the right level of hype when I've seen Nogari fall behind on yeah. Rise so many times. He was like zero and yeah. three, and then had one play and the game was over. Nogari zero and two, this has never happened before. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Except it has. And it almost feels unfair to, yeah. to, to have that. I feel like I, we should, I should have just erased that knowledge so that we could give him the right you know, amount of hype for clawing things back, but it's just how his rise seems to work. He just plays at the same level of aggression, mm -hmm. and eventually, he's just too strong. And now, fully stacked Rod of Ages, Seraph's Embrace already done. Even Nuclear feeling uh, pretty comfortable as uh, all of the skill shots are avoided, just narrowly. Yeah, one thing it did do is it did give Robo a bit of a head start in the game for Zarelli, who, if he does find a team fight, could be good. Need those pike hooks to land, though, if they want any type of strong initiation. Otherwise, Going to see more and more of that poke coming through. It was free poke there for Showmaker. Of course, it was on to a guy who just doesn't take damage in Pike because of his gray health, but still you get the impressive. idea. It, it looked like it was damage. Yeah, it was a big chunk of uh, unnecessary damage. As now he's going to dive in, tries to make that necessary, and he does it. The Electrocute well, proc to finish off the Pike. 
And that's the cost of curse that you never uh, want to have, Jeff. It looks like you could do damage to Pike, but really, you can't. Okay, you can. Actually, you can just kill him. Okay. Is that your silly person voice? Yeah. Can we just use silly person voice? I yeah. like that. That's how. Hearing Blade Caller under two. All right. That's how other people hear me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Not me, Jet. I only yeah. hear intelligence. As uh, Showmaker can't find the chain, but now that he's paired with the Yumi, it feels like uh, he's been unlocked, and Inner Turret now is just going to get taken down. Looks like Flamengo, not a lot of options as far as that. And look at the dive forward. Shrimp is going to go golden, but do Flamengo have an answer? The answer's no so far as Showmaker throws his way forward. Canyon gets a kick onto BRTT to answer the ultimate he threw, and now Showmaker dives in again. Another kill onto the bike, who's just out of the oh, death man. chamber, and then goes straight back in. Nogari secures the one onto Goku. And now Dom one, they could do anything. They've decided that it's Baron time as Robo. Oh no, the Realm Warp right on top of an Aurelia. That's going to be that. BRTT has respawned, so no ace, but still Dom one moved to the Baron. They just make it look so easy. Th this game is close. It was close, but they just. Are you seeing my frustration? Yes, oh. I too share this frustration. <laughs> uh, Showmaker is completely taking over, but it's because the Damwon team is is doing this together. They just all dive in for this one bit of burst, and then they completely push Flamengo onto their back foot. Because look, look at this. It's like the whole team just moves back at once as Flamengo is looking for the engage, and then the whole team moves forward at the same time. It helps when a champ can attach himself on another champ to make it look like you're more coordinated, but I swear <laughs> they do this with multiple champions. Well, they do. I mean, they've got safeguard. I mean, Lee Sin can do it yeah. as well. You were just, just talking about worse, it. you and me. Yeah. Oh, man. So, Beryl and Canyon just bouncing around between the three carries of Darm One Gaming, and that, I feel like this composition almost epitomizes what this team is. And uh, when Nuclear is performing the way he is, I mean, he's still doing damage in these fights, unlike the liability, you could almost say. He was uh, in that first day of play. It's a very, very scary proposition. Flamengo now are relegated to underneath their inhibitor turrets. Nogari, of course, is on the bottom side of the map, just farming things out. And it's 404, Showmaker not found. He's invisible, just poking forward. I and challenge Flamengo. Even though it's a low success rate, mm -hmm. I really want to see Flamengo use a flank ward and teleport in when they try and siege. All right. Can I see that in circles? Yes, please. Yep. Right there would be a good ward. Yep. Unfortunately, they moved to the other side, so I'd love it if they could get a ward there, but it just can't happen. Yeah, well, we'll see where the pike can stay invisible for long enough to maybe sneak one in. But at the moment, there's no longer going to be an inner turret, and Flamengo just look like they've ran out of answers. This is the problem, right? Yep. When you're getting pressure this much, you need room to breathe to formulate your theoretical plan. But that bone skewer landed, the zoomies were there, and Canyon's now back at full health again. A showmaker dives in, Goku almost gets chunked out, as now the shape splitter is in, but it's not going to actually managed to distract distract this dumb one roster safeguard you and me inhibitor turrets dead base mm -hmm. broken inhibitor going to follow and all the while Noggery yeah. is on the bottom side of the map it's one of those games that feels like dumb one has seven players against three on flamengo's side yeah flamengo just can't 5v5 straight into Damwon, they have to flank and they definitely can't play a split up game we just saw a showmaker use about three buttons to take the other soul laner completely out of the fight. Uh, and that will just keep happening until the Nexus falls if Flamengo doesn't find a way to get a flank ward in. I, I really wish right there as Damwon had pulled back from top lane, if Flamengo would have just gotten a ward for TP somewhere behind them to try and get a fight. And they have one in the tri brush, and, and I feel like they have to go if they want any chance. Yep. Right there. Well, that's not... It's close enough. They can teleport on that one. Yeah, any sort of flank. In fact, I just want to see any sort of engage to come out here because as this game goes on, they're just going to fall further and further behind. You can see 8,000 gold is now the lead for Damon. Nogari still just playing with distance on the bottom side of the map, landing these pot shot cues as now Lucy might be able to find a bone skewer here. Channels flips back Canyon, but not even going to find the snare. It's not going to be enough as Showmaker dives on in. Oh, a bit, little bit of a miscommunication, but a zoning no. last, last chapter. 
But final chapter, sorry, is possibly going to be enough there as everything is crumbling. It's the structures that just right. cannot withstand. It's too it's late, but the teleport's board. coming. Yep, it is, as Lucy's already dead. Two inhibitors are going to die as well as Robo booking it into the back line. But so far, everyone's just been destroyed. Pop Blossom comes forward, but it's answered with the Feather Storm. And Nuclear is just so safe. Another Vanguard's Edge flies to Narnia, as Ejim would say. And now Nexus Turrets should be the focus. BRTT is just popped on the skull he's gonna be taken down and now Nogger is fighting people on their own fountain goes golden does Robo but he's gonna have to watch as his base is in shambles once again nuclear is going to get taken down and another realm warp to get them to the fountain down one go undefeated in the planes group stage damn one gaming the only undefeated team of 12 that entered the play-in stage, secured their number one seed in this group, and they just look good doing it. Yeah. The inevitability that they're showing us is just terrifying. If I'm a group's team, I'm looking at this squad being like, please, for the love of God, don't put them in my group. Yep. Because they already have the momentum. That's the scary part. That's what I, when I looked at uh, the LCK's positions, in Worlds, mm -hmm. I mean, a, a lot of people were thinking, oh, this is going to be really rough, but I want the challenge to start as soon as possible. I want these teams to be to be challenged, to be warmed up, to be ready as quickly as they can, because we can't have complacency after what we saw in 2018. We need to have the LCK come out and really smash people to really put that respect back in, and also to really make sure that they have the right respect for the rest of the world. Yeah, and I'm sure I'm gonna have a lot of opportunity to talk about this later on in the World Championship, but to me, the 2018 LCK performance is gonna look nothing like the 2019 LCK performance, mostly because every single player is different. Hey, there's one, all right? And he's, he's in NA. you guys. He's in he's <laughs> Court JJ, he's the only LCK representative from last year who's starting at Worlds this year. And it's, I think, because the LCK uh, was reborn in many ways this year. When you look at the youth of Damwon Gaming, the fifth youngest team at the World Championship, Griffin, the second youngest yep. team at the World Championship, and then the oldest Korean team has Faker. So you're fine. Yeah, right? he's so the only <laughs> one that's really stayed along with the roster as well. So then picking up a whole bunch of extra players as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you. And I'm glad that we've got new blood that we're bringing in mm -hmm. to the LCK because I felt like even when we had our representatives last year, it didn't feel like it was necessarily the right ones. The fact that Griffin so narrowly missed their opportunity now are going to be here to try and flex their muscles is uh, really important. Of course, a lot of people may yeah. have uh, counted them out, but Damwon already starting off looking strong. Yeah, and I think Damwon is a combination of what you used to expect from yep. Korean League of Legends and what has changed in Korean League of Legends. Because their early game is still a little bit of absorbing, right? They're yeah. just saying, we don't want to fall too far behind, but as soon as they hit their items, they're fast. The second fastest average game time in the LCK, even though they only had an average early game. And even in the play-in stage, which has increased in skill, we've seen clearly this year that has happened. They're playing that way, and they look much better today than they did two days ago. Yeah, the thing that made SKT look so dominant when they were on their dream run throughout the uh, you know few years in the past now is that inevitability and that feeling like they just knew exactly mm -hmm. what they needed to do and at exactly which time to do it as well. It meant that you could see these first bloods. You've got you know, that Dumbledoge play where he picks up the kill onto Faker in the mid lane, but that never made you feel like they weren't going to win anyway, right? And yeah. that was the feeling that I was having in this game, and that's what I wanted to see out of Dom 1 here in the plans. Yeah, they've made their statement, and now every team can just hope they don't get drawn against them in the knockout stage. Yeah, that's exactly right. But to get more insight on Dom 1's win, let's head over to Law and their mid laner, Showmaker. Thank you very much, guys, and thank you, Showmaker, for joining me. You took first seed in the group. I guess that was expected from you guys. But how does it feel to advance to the knockout stage, knowing that every potential opponent is afraid of you right now? I don't think we showed a really good performance enough so that everybody's afraid of us. So I think we just got lucky. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why not? 
I was talking to your ADC earlier, and he mentioned something about you not being prepped enough. I also know that your coach couldn't come to the playing stage because of health issues. So can you explain why and how it affected your preparation coming here? 아 제가 전에 원딜 뉴클리어 선수랑 얘기를 했는데요. 이제 연습이 잘안 됐다고 했고 또 특히 이번에 관, 가, 감독님이 못 오셨어요. 이제 어떤 준비 그런 모든 것에 대해서 한 마디 부탁드려요. 어 감독님이 못 오시게 된 거는 뭐 굉장히 아쉽지만 그래도 저희 코치님들이 계셔가지고 그나마 나은 것 같고 연습은 그냥 앞으로 잘하면 될 거라고 믿고 있어요. So yeah, our head coach couldn't come, so we're sad about that, but the other coaches are here, so we're okay. And we're going to prepare better for the next stage. That's really good to hear, I, I guess. Um, now for the rest of the competition, you were mentioning that you haven't played at your full potential here. Don't you think it's going to become an issue facing other teams to make such mistakes? 아 지금까지 다문의 모든 잠재력을 보여주지 못하셨는데요. 이제 다음 라운드 때 약간 그런 게 긴, 문제가 될 거라고 생각하시나요? 어 저희는 뭐 지금 저희가 그렇게 잘하고 있진 않은데 그래도 이런 경기력보다는 더 나은 경기력을 보여드리, 보여드리려고 더 열심히 연습할 거고 그렇게 연습해서 다음 스테이지까지는 무조건 뚫을 수 있을 것 같아요. So it's true that we are not able to show you our real performance, but I'm confident that we can prepare well and go through the next stage. All right, well, thank you very much for the interview. We'll see you next week then. Thank you, Hajin, for the translation. And we're going to take a break and coming back, we will see the fourth game of the day.